Okay, so um, how, how, when you're in a difficult relationship, how to transcend the, transcend the, the relationship? Um, <clears throat> so for me, um, I'm a student of Dr. David R. Hawkins, and for me, the, um, the most profound thing I, I realized with him is, is it's, uh, if I want to be helpful to myself and the whole world, I need to transcend my projections of the world. So I don't really need to fix anything in the world, I just need to fix myself. So it's got nothing to do with the world, or at least the problems that I see in the world, I just, I just let go of them in myself and the solutions will come, as opposed to trying to fix the world because I see there's a problem in the world. So that's what I call tra transcending. Um, and my experience with my mother uh, which I, I lived with my parents my whole life, they're both dead now, but uh, was that my attitude was I was going to transcend my mother, meaning that um, there's nothing she could do or say, no words she could do, no, no hooks she could say that would affect um, the, the connection to the infinite peace of God. So uh, the, the idea that she could say anything or do anything that would trigger me is not a problem with her, it's a problem in me. And so the work for me would then be to transcend everything that she could do or say that is making me feel like disconnected. And that was it. And my, my intention with my mother uh, wasn't even to be of love to her. It was just to transcend the crap that came up in me. Uh, and, uh, uh, and, uh, and if, if you would say what is my intention with her is like to be neutral so that there's nothing she can do and say that is going to disconnect me from the infinite peace of God. That's it. It wasn't even to, to love her or try and be helpful to her. But uh, the only thing was that every time I'd be with her, uh, I think in divine order, she would just bring up every single trigger one after the other. And would do those things which I think most people know in intense in relationships where they keep poking you to try and make you react on certain topics, like you could be politics, something we totally disagreed on, and she would just keep asking these questions, trying to pull me in, and I'd have just have to try and keep my mouth shut, or try and change the topic, or just leave the room, and just try and do the prayers to transcend uh, what was disturbing me. But the idea wasn't that she was disturbed. I mean, the idea that I had become disturbed was my fault. It wasn't her fault, because um, it's like. Obviously, I, th that I'm being triggered is my fault. It's got nothing to do with her. So uh, if she uses a certain vocal tone, uh, vocal tones don't have the power to trigger me. It's just that I've taken on programming that means that I'm susceptible to vocal tones. I'm susceptible to the idea that she's my mother and that she should behave a certain way. I'm also susceptible to my beliefs that she shouldn't say certain things or do certain things. But that's not her fault. All of that's my fault for allowing that stuff to trigger me. So, uh, the, uh, what I can say is it took me five years of that attitude of just clearing, cancelling beliefs, praying for a miracle to see it differently, feeling up huge feelings that came up when she would say or do things, uh, to, to transcend it. And, and, and she was never the problem, the problem was always me. And my, my thing was to transcend her, so there's nothing she could do or say. So that, you know, she, if, if the intention would be, in the end, if she, even if she screamed her head off and said, you're, you're a disaster as a son, uh, that, uh, that would have no effect at all. That was the intention, to uh, full transcendence. And sometimes I had to leave the room and do a lot of praying and a lot of counselling, uh, feel a lot of feelings. Uh, but I never wanted to change her, because changing her was never the thing. That was never the point of the whole thing, of transcending my mother. And then after five years, uh, which is a long time, but that's how long it took. I just felt, you know, I get this thing with, with people, it's like I feel there's nothing they can do or say any longer that will affect me. It's just everything's been wiped off, you know. And, uh, and it was like, and at that point, the most mystical thing happened. It's like our relationship totally transformed in an instant. And she was loving and she would look forward to me coming and speaking to her. And, I, and it was like, what happened to my mother? She just radically shifted. She was just loving and kind and wanting to speak and, say, and, and speak on, on the things that we could agree on 
and just having loving communications and it was just wonderful. And she died a few years later and we had this wonderful relationship. And it was just as I had learned from Dr. Hawkins, which I now see was telling me the truth, it's like the way to solve problems in life is not to solve the problems but to transcend the problems in me and get to a higher level of consciousness. And the higher level of consciousness solves the problem. Because when I'm in a... Let, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use arbitrary numbers. Like if I, I was on a scale of consciousness, let's say I see problems and I'm at a low level of consciousness. Well, if I try and fix the problems from a low level of consciousness, it's not really that effective. So really, the best thing for me to do is to go to a higher level of consciousness and that level of consciousness will just automatically fix the problem without me trying to solve it. So my way of solving the problem is to go to a higher level of consciousness rather than try and solve it at a lower level of consciousness. And my experience of doing that with my mother was that actually works. You know, like, uh, you know, Hawkins would often talk about Ramana Maharishi. He says the problem you see out there is just an illusion. It's in your mind. There is no problem out there. The problem is in me seeing a problem. That's the problem. So, uh, and, but also from Hawkins, I got, it's actually practical to let go of the problems that I'm seeing in me actually resolves the problems out there. And I actually found that to be the truth. Uh, so, uh, both with physical illnesses, with relationship issues. So usually when I see a problem in the world, I still do see problems. I'm trying to transcend seeing the problem. And usually when I don't see a problem, usually the problem miraculously gets handled. So, uh, does it mean I don't take actions? It doesn't mean I don't take actions, but usually the actions come from an effortless place after I don't see a problem, if that makes sense. It's like, um, I hope that I'll try and say that more clearly. Often when I don't, don't feel attacked by a problem, suddenly I'll say something and do something, or as the solution be provided for me from a different place, when I'm no longer suffering the problem, and it just all automatically gets handled. I don't know, I hope that makes sense. But it's like from a higher place, a solution comes. And I might say things and do things, but it's almost like they didn't come from me. Uh, and, and, they, and, and, it gets, and it gets handled. So that's the way I deal with problems. While, I, while I'm feeling emotionally impacted by problems, I, I usually will spend time trying to not be emotionally impacted by problems. And then when I'm not emotionally impacted by the problem, there's been a lot of trends. And usually the solution will come uh, and it will, be, it will resolve in a good way. So my, my problem, you know, I see the problem is, is me. And if I want a solution to the problem, I have to get rid of me seeing a problem uh, as the way to get the solution. But it's never for me to pray for the other person to change. That, that can never be the solution for me. Uh, because I'll do prayers on me, like I don't want to see them as a problem. Or I'll pray for God's guidance on it, but I see that God's guidance, I don't, for me I sort of see God's guidance won't come while I'm in fear and resentment and full of viciousness and wanting to fix the other person. That for me, I would sort of see that as blocking the solution coming to me from a higher level. It is a bit like the Einstein thing, you know, you need a higher level, you don't want to be fixing the problem from a lower level, you want a higher level to solve the problem for you. Okay.